Okay, our eighth unit is wave sound and light. And again, trying to provide you some lecture material in the absence of being able to see you. So uh, we've got a couple types of waves. Uh, waves are all things that just uh, transmit energy, and that's an important thing. So a couple different types of waves. People usually think waves are going up and down, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, the types of waves that... Uh, so we've got mechanical waves versus electromagnetic waves. So mechanical waves are waves that transfer through a medium. So examples of those could be slinky, water, sound, earthquake, anything that needs an, an actual substance to travel through, as opposed to electromagnetic. And those are your, um, those are your lights and your Roy G, I'm sorry, and your other rest of the electromagnetic spectrum, radio waves, microwaves, infrared, light, UV, x-rays, and gamma rays. And all of these are on your reference table. Um, but the important thing is they do not require a medium to travel through. So if it's going through space, uh, electromagnetic can go through very easily, but mechanical cannot because space is in essence a vacuum. So like in a movie where you see a spaceship explode and then you hear the sound from it, you know, that's kind of a a movie hoax because you cannot hear sound through space because there's nothing to transmit that energy. Um, so moving forward, I've got two types of waves. I've got transverse or longitudinal, and waves usually fill in, fit into one of these categories. Um, you know, I'll just fast forward here. Um, so in a transverse wave, the material actually goes up and down as the energy goes horizontally. So the Distance, I'm sorry, the, the direction that the wave is traveling is actually perpendicular to the direction of the disturbance. Okay, so the keyword is perpendicular. The disturbance is perpendicular to the energy. Um, light goes up and down, even though there's not uh, a disturbance in medium, it's a disturbance in the field. Uh, slinkies can do that. There's a lot of different things that can do that. As opposed to longitudinal, and this is a little harder to grasp, in longitudinal, the wave motion goes in the same direction as the energy. So the disturbance moves back and forth this way horizontally, and the energy also transfers that way horizontally. So that's a non-standard wave. You may not be familiar with that, but you know that's a, an important one. Um, the areas where it gets bunched up is an area of compression. The area where it gets spread out is an area of refraction, rarefraction, sorry. Um, water waves are actually a, a, a little bit of an anomaly in the particles. Um, do both a transverse and a, long, and a longitudinal manner. So they kind of end up in like a circular wave. Um, amplitude here um, is the height from here to here. So it'd be three. The wavelength would be a length of a full wave. So it's from crest to crest. And this, it'd be two. Okay. So the crest is the top of the wave. The trough is the bottom of the wave. The node is a place that doesn't move. And we'll talk about that in a bit, a little bit. Uh, the wavelength is the length of the complete wave. You can measure that from node to node, or you can measure that from crest to crest. And then lastly, the amplitude is the how high it goes. Both the amplitude and the wavelength, they're both measures in meters. 